With the government's $85 billion loan to insurance giant AIG, the topic of state versus federal regulation is on a lot of insurance regulators' minds these days. In these exclusive interviews with Insurance Journal, a number of state regulators talk about how that debate will be affected by the bailout. Well, you know, it's interesting because there have been some broad sweeping statements saying, gee, AIG as a company is in trouble, therefore insurance regulation needs to be federal. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the parts of AIG that are in trouble here are the parts that were federally regulated. The holding company is regulated by the Office of Thrift Supervision, a federal entity, and not very well regulated, I might add. The insurance assets are the strong part of the company. They're what's going to be used to shore up the company and to get them through this transaction. They were very well regulated at the state level. So actually, the true story here is that the insurance regulatory system came through. It has very good protections for the company. We've acted in a coordinated way to deal with the situation. And so this is a real victory uh, for insurance regulation for anybody that takes more than five seconds to look at the details. But of course, some of our opponents want to sweep with a broad brush and say, if there's any problem in a big, huge financial conglomerate anywhere, it must mean that the insurance companies ought to be federally regulated. It should be the exact opposite. I think overall, though, we have, uh, we as regulators have work to do to educate our legislators and the public about better, about what we do, and that, that really um, the stability in the insurance markets which is the calm and kind of the eye of this whole storm in the financial services market um, is really due to the significantly um, uh, superior regulation that states bring to the insurance market. Prospectively, we'll have ample opportunity to do a post-mortem on the holding company and to see what could have done better, what did the federal agencies that are principally charged with that regulatory regime, what could have been done and should have been done, and what the regulatory framework should look like in the future. But clearly, that is going to be in part recognition that state regulatory system is a key fundamental sound system and should be an integral part of any future system we have, regardless of whether it's a holding company or an individual insurance company. One of the lessons from AIG Holding Company is that state-based insurance regulation is working. It's working well. We as state regulators are at the front lines protecting our consumers, making sure that companies are solvent and are able to meet their promises to consumers and pay claims as the federal government considers, continues to consider deregulating and federalizing insurance regulation. This shows that federal regulators are not always doing their job. They're not always protecting consumers. AIG Holding Company is, was subject to federal regulation and that did not work well. I, I come at it, you know, I, I've seen both sides in, in the media, um, you know, that this is a signal that we should have federal uh, regulation. But I think when we step back and look at why does AIG have any value left, it's because of uh, the state regulation and the need for capital to pay claims. Just the idea that prior to the bailout, we could, we could have still moved $20 billion uh, to help AIG's liquidity on the financial side without damaging uh, the policyholder and still protecting the poli policyholder shows how strong their insurance regulatory environment was. And then you turn to what was causing them the problem. I've looked at all of these banking instruments, the CDOs, the CDSs, as I work through a lot of the issues surrounding AMBEC. And these are instruments that were created under a very lax federal regulator. And they're the cause of, of a lot of our problems today. And so I see it as you know, the opposite of, of the pro-OFC people. I see it as a, this AIG situation as an argument for state-based regulation as it relates to insurance.